Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda Shi. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensivist. And today I wanna to talk about becoming an MDDO anesthesiologist versus a CRNA versus a CAA. First off, I'm asked frequently, all of these different people provide anesthesia. So what is the difference between all of them? To start off, there is a difference in the training and the amount of training necessary in order to become either an anesthesiologist with an MD or DO degree versus a certified registered nurse anesthetist or a CRNA or a certified anesthesiologist assistant, which is a new career profession and a new pathway, but is somewhat limited in the number of schools that are available in the United States, as well as the practice locations that are available. Let's delve into the training required. As an anesthesiologist, I have completed college, which is approximately four years. I went to medical school after finishing my undergraduate degree, and that's four additional years. And then I did four years of residency training in anesthesia, and that's another four years. On top of that, I have also gotten fellowship trained, so that was one additional year of training. That is a total of 13 years of training that I have undergone in order to practice anesthesiology. Additionally, because of my fellowship training, I can practice in the ICU as an ICU doctor as well. In total, at minimum, to become an anesthesiologist, it takes 12 years of training. In order to be a certified registered nurse anesthetist or CRNA, someone must first get their nursing degree after their nursing degree, which typically you can do from college, so that's a college degree. Then a nurse has to practice in an ICU or critical care setting. So this is really important in order to meet the requirements in order to go to CRNA school. Once in CRNA school, that's typically a three-year degree program. The programs are currently either master's or doctorate level, but typically around three years. And to back up, the ICU experience is typically a couple of years, two to three years is the typical requirement. And then, like I said, CRNA school and then out to practice. And finally, a certified anesthesiologist assistant that is a relatively newer profession, typically an individual that will become a AA or anesthesiologist assistant uh, will go for an undergraduate degree with a pre-medical curriculum. So the requirements are the pre-med requirements in order to get into AA school. And then afterwards, AA school is two years and it's a master's degree program. So those are the three different pathways. As an anesthesiologist, my minimum required training is 12 years. As a CRNA, the training itself is really just the three years after um, ICU level care uh, in or ICU work. So that can typically be about six-ish years if someone practiced uh, in the ICU as a nurse for three years and then went back to school for three years. That's about six years of practice there. And then a uh, anesthesiologist assistant, again, is just after a college degree, then two additional years uh, for master's level training specifically in anesthesia. So that's the training pathways. In terms of the cost of training, that's another, I think, important thing to consider when putting all this together uh, to become a physician. Medical school is quite expensive. And so Typically, medical schools range from thirty to seventy thousand dollars each year, and it's a minimum of four years of medical school. At the low end, someone's looking at spending one hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars for medical school over four years, or at the higher end, people could be spending two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand uh, dollars in order to go to medical school, and that. Afterwards, you know, residency, residents do get paid a stipend, but typically that is lower level of pay. And so it's not oftentimes enough to pay off those loans. And I have another video that goes into that in detail as well. In order to become a CRNA, a lot of CRNA schools are actually quite expensive. For the two to three year program, it can range from like $50,000 a year, or sometimes they'll 
uh, listed out as a package like over the course of the entire program, it costs a hundred plus thousand dollars. So the numbers that I saw when I was researching this video was that um, to complete CRNA school, typically it's in the hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollar range. Uh, and again, as a CRNA, the a CRNA could still practice as an ICU nurse during school, whereas as a medical student, typically there's nothing really to practice because you just have a college degree when you go to medical school. I do know of some colleagues that were PAs actually before medical school, and I do know uh, an individual that had worked as a PA while in medical school in order to help offset the cost of medical school. Finally, for an anesthesiologist assistant, it looks like from my research that it's about twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, so you're looking at uh, a little under a hundred thousand uh, dollars for the cost of the master's degree. The other big thing that people often ask me is about salaries after training is done, and so that's another level of comparison that we can go into. As an anesthesiologist, the pay is around a huge range depending on the practice, but can be around $250,000 up to $450,000. And of course, you can always go way lower than that or way higher than that depending on the practice and how much you're working. As a nurse anesthetist, the pay can range from about $100,000 up to $200,000 plus. Uh, and again, also depends on the type of practice and the location and how much someone is working. And finally, a anesthesiologist assistant can be in the about $100,000 to $200,000 range for their salary. The type of practice, how the practice of anesthesia looks for these three different pathways is a little different as well. So as an anesthesiologist, I can practice independently in any state and provide the anesthetic myself. Uh, the other thing that is very common in many places and is the current model that I practice in is a team-based model where I actually work with nurse anesthetists in order to care for patients so that I will be responsible for a few different operating rooms simultaneously. Generally, it's up to four rooms simultaneously at the high level, but uh, typically with our residents, we have certain limitations in how many rooms we can be working on or can be overseeing at any given time. And so that's the type of model that I practice. Additionally, because I mentioned earlier, I have additional training in ICU, I can also be the ICU doctor as well. And that is a separate type of thing and that's something I'll discuss at a different time, but I can be the ICU doctor in the ICU, not just an anesthesiologist there, and then I'm an anesthesiologist in the OR. So my schedule is such that I can do both. Now for a nurse anesthetist, before I go into this, this is a disclaimer. If you came here to stir up controversy about independent practice or about scope of practice, please leave because this video is not meant to do that. This is meant to be educational um, based on what I found online and experiences and people that I've talked to myself as well. So this is an opinion and I'm not going down that path. So in terms of nurse anesthetists, typically nurse anesthetists work with anesthesiologists that are MDs or DOs, there's different types of practices in terms of how many rooms an anesthesiologist can be overseeing. And that really relates to billing at this point. So there are 17 states in which CRNAs can practice independently, meaning not with an anesthesiologist. That is the reality of practice in terms of billing and the way that practices are set up. So there are certain areas where nurse anesthetists do provide anesthesia independently, but the vast majority of the time, they are working with an anesthesiologist. Now, finally, a anesthesiologist assistant is a slightly different and very, very new type of pathway. It's so new that there are only 12 accredited programs in the United States. And so there are only a certain number of states that AAs practice in. So there is some limitation. AAs actually practice under a anesthesiologist as well, but their limitations are that while a, in terms of billing, a nurse anesthetist could potentially uh, 
there could be many of them, more than four nurse anesthetists with two, one anesthesiologist. When it comes to an anesthesiologist assistant, typically the billing practices are such that you cannot supervise or work with more than four AAs or anesthesiologist assistants at a time. So the last question I wanted to address is kind of some of my own personal opinions and thoughts about each of the different pathways and someone's uh, background or their situation. So medical school is a really, really, really long, arduous process to become an anesthesiologist. Um, however, there's certain flexibility and there's a certain level of, there's a different type of practice when going down the physician pathway. And on top of that, I do want to emphasize that going to medical school to become an anesthesiologist is a pathway where we practice medicine versus um, the CRNA pathway is the practice of nursing. And as a result, the two different professions are actually overseen by different boards. So the Board of Medicine oversees physician practice, whereas the Board of Nursing oversees CRNA practice. It's a different way to learn how to care for patients. It's the focus and the approach is a little different as well. And so it's important to be able to recognize these two differences to understand what aligns best with where you see yourself going. Another thing to consider as well is cost and time. So it does take more time and can be more costly to become a physician. There's also a lot more liability involved becoming a physician anesthesiologist because there is the component of working in a team and overseeing numerous operating rooms. Obviously one could take away that liability by being in, uh, by practicing anesthesia in their own room. So if I decided to do all of my own rooms, then that is something that I could do as well. And so that's another thing to consider. Something I like to bring up is that, you know, it's never too late to go to medical school. I, I do know that there are CRNAs that have decided to go to medical school because they felt like the practice as a CRNA was not quite the right fit for them. Uh, additionally, there are other, you, know, you can always go back to medical school, so it's never too late. But becoming a CRNA is also a really great pathway because there is great experience in the ICU. You can make money. So if you have uh, loans from undergraduate, your undergraduate degree, you can actually pay those off or save some money in order to go to CRNA school. And during CRNA school, you can still work. And so as a result, it's a little easier, I would say, to probably pay off the cost of training to become a CRNA compared to an MD or DO anesthesiologist. The last thing too is the anesthesiologist assistant pathway is a really interesting new pathway. And I think that that's a great option for someone who was considering PA school, only a two year degree program, and you get to practice anesthesiology. The downside of that is if anesthesia was not the right fit and you went to AA school, then you would be pretty boxed into the anesthesia route and that's different from a PA because a PA can really go and practice in various specialties. And so there's a lot more flexibility there. Going to AA school would mean that you must become an AA. There's not a way to kind of pivot to another specialty and utilize that degree. However, the AA degree is relatively more affordable. The amount of time to train is much less, right? So to become a doctor, you have to have at least eight years after college of training to become a CRNA. You have to be an ICU nurse for a couple of years and then three, two to three more years of CRNA school. So that's at least five years of training after college. And then uh, for an AA, it's two years as a master's degree. So after college, you can go out and practice after two years. And so it really just, I think, depends on the environment, the type of practice you want, and honestly, the, your financial situation and how much debt you're willing to take on and how much time you're willing to take on for training. I think those are all considerations you have to make if you're considering each of these different pathways. Now, I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have specific questions about these different pathways. Also, let me know if you have 
requests for different kinds of other videos you want to see in here. Uh, make sure to give this video a like if it was helpful to you and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.